All right, in this video, we'll be looking at um, trilobites and chelicerates. And so uh, for trilobites and chelicerates, there are going to be several classes under particular chelicerates that we're going to spend some time on as well. So for trilobites, uh, no classes here to talk about, um, at least for this class, because they're all extinct. Um, they live from the Cambrian period to the Carboniferous period. Um, body is divided into two longitudinal furrows. Um, and you see these furrows here, which divides the body into three lobes, a very distinct head, trunk, and abdomen as well. And they have biraminous appendages. And so this is going to link them to the previous subphylum that we talked about, the crustacea. Uh, not a lot to talk about with trilobites other than, again, they're only found in uh, fossils like you see here. But there's a lot of fossil evidence for trilobites. And so they are very, uh, they're vastly studied as links to more modern arthropods like Chelicerata, Chelicerata, Chelicerates. All right. And so these are horseshoe crabs, um, spiders, ticks, mites, scorpions, sea spiders are all in this group. They have two very clear tagmata. They have what are, what's called, um, they have a cephalothorax, which is for, for, this particular group are, is called the prosoma, and then they have the abdomen, which is called the opth opisthoma. And uh, six pairs of appendages are found on the cephalothorax. They have one pair of chelicera, which are like the fangs. They have another pair of what are called pedipalps, and these are going to have different uh, functions depending on the type of organism and then they always have four pairs of legs no antenna found on chelicerates um, they they mostly suck fluid or liquid food from their prey um, not all of the not all of them are going to be this way but the vast majority of them are going to be this way there are three classes found in chelicerata uh, meristoma or meristomata uh, Pinknagonida and Arachnida, which we you're probably most familiar with, Arachnida, and so we're going to spend a whole video talking about that. And so there's those um, classes, and we're going to spend time talking about two of them today. The first one is Meristomata. Um, this is horseshoe crabs, and so this contains a lot of extinct groups, and then there's horseshoe crabs, which are often called living fossils because they have a very uh, primitive. They have a lot of primitive. Uh, features to them that kind of link them to the past. Uh, they're pretty much untrained, unchanged from the Triassic period, which is when dinosaurs were walking the earth. Uh, they live mostly along shallow water on the coastlines. Uh, you can see them all the time. You typically don't see that many of them, but you may see a dead one or you may see a live one. Just leave them alone. Uh, like most living things, they just want to be left alone. Um, they have this unsegmented horseshoe shaped uh, carapace, which is where they get their name. You can see it really clearly from the underneath. They have that real, really clear horseshoe appearance to them. They have a very broad um, abdomen here. You can see this broad abdomen with this tail piece called a telson. Uh, the abdomen has six pairs of appendages on it. And it also contains these structures called book gills, which the reason they're called that is because it looks like pages, right? A lot of surface area to volume ratio, which is going to allow, allow for better breathing. There's some picture of some horseshoe crab larva. Uh, notice that the horseshoe crab larva resemble the trilobites. And so you see the link there between them. And the second class, or the next class we'll look at, are called Pinknagonia gonida. These are sea spiders. A thousand species of sea spiders um, can almost be up to one meter in diameter. So these are really big. They have these small, thin bodies, as you can see there. Um, some of them have what are called duplicate appendages, so they can possess five or six pair of walking appendages instead of four. And so that you can see here, there's more than that. Uh, their mouth is like a what's called a proboscis, which is like a long tube to gather fluids. Um, they usually are eating cnidarians and other soft-bodied organisms, so you don't need to be concerned. I guess, I guess one of them could eat you or something, but it's probably going to be highly unlikely. Uh, it's very small head, two pairs of eyes. Here's a 
big picture of a, you see the proboscis there very clearly. Um, um, these occur in all oceans, but are most abundant in the coldest oceans in the world, the polar oceans.